hey guys, it's Matt. Um, there's nothing important here. Just want to talk about a variety of different things. Something strange happened to me regarding a synchronicity. I want to tell you about that. Uh, maybe get a few laughs at the mayor of East Town's expense. There's nothing that important here. But uh, I did want to remind everybody, I usually don't make a video the day after I post a freevoice.io. So if you haven't gone over there, it's a presentation on the music industry. Hope you can check it out. It it took me forever to put that together. I mentioned in the video, um, I alerted people that there was a video live on Free Voice when I popped in yesterday, Sunday, on YouTube, saying I had to reload um, the Mac or Apple GarageBand, completely remove it from my computer and reload it. I would record all of these samples, all of this um, audio, and then literally it was all garbled. It all, but then on the reloading, it saved the old file and everything was fixed. Very strange. And I'm not going to talk about it too much here, but I've mentioned that this experience with the new Mac, they had 10 years to make everything perfect. 10 years at least newer than the old Mac. Everything so far is worse. And I mean, look, okay, there's one thing it makes videos a lot more quickly. If I, on the old Mac, if I record for an hour, the compiling was about an hour. Where this, if I talk for an hour or you show pictures of some videos, the compiling might be 15 minutes. So that's improved. I guess they had to give you one or two advantages. So it seems real. But it, 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 you know, what are you saying, Matt, that in somehow on purpose... Everything is more effed up. Yeah, I don't. The, it, the reality works like this across the board. It's always under the guise of improvements and technology, and we always end up with more to do. Our lists get longer, and you know the way. Then, am, am I surprised, knowing what I know about how the entire reality operates? When I got the new Mac, did I expect everything to be perfect and simple? No, I expected just the opposite. And if anybody's yelling at me, well, Matt, that's what you expected. That's what you got. There's a, there's a point to that as well. Absolutely. I probably got what I expected to get over somebody else's uh, experience with a new iMac may be completely um, beautiful because they expect it to be uh, se seamless, for example. That is a factor. But just want to show you this, guys. Um, let me pop over here to my photos and tell you about the synchronicity before we get to the... The synchronicity involves the spider here, but if anybody wants to Let's just see Bootsy and uh, Zara popping up on my table. That's probably not going to be terribly exciting, but there's a lot of people here that like cats. So, okay. Um, here's what happened. This is pretty amazing because these synchronicities are happening to us more and more. Um, was outside and I was talking on the phone and there was this, it was like a spider battle going on between two pieces of wood or two posts and it seemed like this spider by the way th this spider on the left would have would scare anybody i mean it was it's big and ugly and mean that tells you how ridiculous this one was i mean i've never quite seen anything like it i don't know if there's a full egg sack on the back with the yellow balls and stripes and uh, you know, the, the little one was scary, but I, it almost seemed like the little one had spun the web and the big one was kind of taking over its web. So I'm talking to someone on the phone, grab the camera, start taking some pictures, I was talking to someone on the phone saying how amazing what I was witnessing was. Let me see if I can have another picture here. And that's not much better, but you can see the other spider still here. And it wasn't really much of a fight. It would, They would touch and then this little one would be would understand what it was up against and it would kind of run away, but then it would come back. Anyway, point is, talked about this with the person on the phone for about five minutes and I'd never quite seen a spider like this. It is as, It was as big and as menacing basically as it looked here, but the vit, I have this old digital camera that doesn't take pictures very well of anything close up. The brilliance of the colors, it's just not doing its it justice. Okay, so I sit down in front of my computer and um, Yahoo Mail shows me um, advertisements. And here's the advertisement it shows off to the right. Never have seen this before, never saw anything like this before. A book called Graph Algorithms. 
with a you don't you didn't see the spider web in that picture guys because the bad the old digital camera didn't pick it up but it was this web was exactly like this between the wood and the spider is exactly like this now again it was pretty amazing and to me this we've seen enough of this where this stuff is no longer a coincidence i'm discussing the spider with someone on the phone putting all my energy and attention into it and then as soon as i sit down on my computer and i mean the second i sat down for some reason the advertisement on the right of my mail yahoo mail graph algorithms the book i have no idea i have no interest in apache spark programming neo 4j programming spider web exactly like what was outside which you couldn't see in the picture and even the spider if 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 you're designing this graph algorithms book like okay you might put a spider on the web but why would it be it's the same exact way like a gigantic back egg sac in other words if you're if you're just drawing a spider and this is this is drawn in it's unusual to make the egg sac so out of proportion with the rest of the spider See what I mean? Like, you don't draw a spider. Like, this isn't normal how a spider looks, where the egg sac is 90% or 80% of the mass. Why would you even draw it like that? Yet, I had just come in from seeing um, a spider that had the biggest, most brilliant, colored, mean-looking, I mean, egg sac of, I've ever seen. This thing was, I, I don't know, like half of your little finger. I mean, way more than from the end knuckle to the end of your finger. It was massive, massive. It was so big that you just, you know, you would never want to get bit by it or get too close to it. Um, anyway, so am I? what am I saying? Am I saying that, of course I'm saying, in some way, I, I, who knows how this works, but you know what I think. I think the world isn't very real or, or not real at all. In some way, the advertisement that was shown was related to what I just had my energy and attention on. Now, but Matt, if that was the case, wouldn't that happen all the time? Whenever you got excited about it? I mean, it would just be happening all the time. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I, no, it would happen all the time. I hear you. I hear you. Well, Matt, if it's only happened, it happens to you like this once every few weeks. I mean, then it's just a, it's just a coincidence. It's just a synchronicity. Okay. I, I don't think it is. A lot of these types of things have, are happening uh, more and more to us, mostly on the lines of, of what's come to me from people over the years in emails and comments and things like that, saying they used to just be talking about a subject in front of their computer. And of course, we've known this for 10 years, the computer or the, or the iPad or whatever, whatever program, then would start showing ads based on what they're having a conversation about. Like if I was talking to Pam about cat food, no czar. No, Zar, not a good time. Um, I was talking to Pam about cat food. You'd start getting ads for cat food. Okay, we know, we know. They've been probably doing that for 15 years. But people saying, um, many people have said this on and off over the years, just basically almost thinking about something and an ad will run. Is there something to this, in my opinion? Absolutely. I don't, I don't really have any more information than or to share it or any more theories than what I just shared, but I just it was amazing when it happened. I just wanted to share it with you. Okay, let's bounce over to here for a minute and just have some fun with this. First thing I thought when I saw this ad pop up, HPO Max says, Check out all the nominees, <laughs> see why HBO Max leads the competition with 130 Emmy nominations, catch up on award-worthy movies, series, and documentaries now. Um, why is that funny? Because the first thing I thought of is, what what nominees? They're implying a real competition exists here, and HBO Max has no way to be in the back room or influence those that make any... It's all one. It's all one system. I don't, I don't buy it. I, homie, I don't play it. I don't buy. Oh, HBO Max, they're just waiting to see if their shows got the uh, Emmy nominations or the awards. Or It's one system. <laughs> it, it, they, they, they know, they probably know before they even started filming Mayor of Easton that it would get certain awards. It's just, it, you know, but they're going to make it seem as real as possible. No, 
It's a closed envelope. They don't know. Okay. Yeah. No, they don't know. It's not all one system. And, you know, I mean, just like when we say whatever next war will be fought, whenever that is going to be from the one world system, the countries are, they already know about it, that they're already positioning their pawns and stuff in, in place to follow through with the reality script. So I just thought that was kind of funny. But this mayor of Easttown, guys, I thought this, the first episode I watched, I might have watched half of the second episode. It's horrible. Absolutely horrible. This mayor, it's not, I wish I could, would stop flashing around, but the mayor of East, here it comes, the mayor of Easttown. Now, I think it's supposed to be like up here in Pennsylvania, you have Allentown, Easton. I think she's supposed to be in Easton, which isn't spelled like Easttown. Is that... Kate Winslet, and they made jokes even on Saturday Night Live about she's trying to do an outside Philadelphia accent, and she just can't pull it off, and it does sound funny, and it really does. I guess she's British. Why would they put her in that role? But the point is, guys, when I the, from the second episode, whenever I turned that off and never went back to it, I literally said, um, maybe it's only first-level truth, but... Uh, you know, I never how, how much have I ever thought, sat down and thought about the reason they made this this horrible show, the mayor of Easton, East Town. Sorry, the show exists simply to make your life look better. I think the show came out right when the sea thing in the U.S. was really bad. I mean, you know, nobody could go anywhere, do anything, and you know how much better is it now? But you look at the you know Penn State football game. There's a hundred thousand kids screaming. Oh, I, I need to talk about that in, in this video. 100,000 people climbing all over each other, but the news tells us how tragic the situation is. So I'm like, this show, I think this show literally exists so you see how horrible this woman's life is, the mayor of Easttown, and then you assume, you know, thousands and millions of people, of course, mi sorry, millions and tens of millions are living horrible lives like she is, especially in the Pennsylvania suburbs and the, the Philadelphia suburbs and the Rust Belt and places uh, outside of San Francisco where the great unwashed live. And you look at this woman and you say, oh my gosh, I thought my life was bad. I mean, that's all it is. It's horrible. You go, oh, who? what an existence. And I don't think people consciously realize it, but they say, you know, subconsciously, my life's pretty darn good compared to the mayor here. And if anybody's saying... Um, you know, we all know well, how I think reality works at this point, but if anybody's saying, so producers and directors and everybody sat down at a table and they said, yeah, we've got to put this out to make sure people's lives are horrible, but this mayor of Easton will make their lives seem better. And they're all, they all know what they're doing. No, I don't think it works that way. For, for lack of better words, I'm sorry to keep putting it this way. We'll never quite understand it. I think the reality itself or something in the in the fog at the highest levels wants people to see the mayor of east town and and maybe because of, of the timing with the sea and say my life's not that bad look at look at her look at kate winslet here this, that's bad man with i don't think the director's in on it if inter if my interpretation is right of course i might be wrong if my interpretation is right about the aim or goal of the show i don't think the director's in on it i don't think the producer's in on it i think it just happens without the people being aware of why it's happening. Therefore, I mean, if, if you believe that, then the reality download must exist, doing the reality's bidding without being aware of, uh, you know, they know not what they do. I'm a believer in that. That's probably way out there for a lot of people, but I'm absolutely a believer in that because I've seen it happen, or that's my interpretation of what's happening over and over and over again. Okay, guys, let's check out the nominees and just get a few laughs at the expense of the reality itself, uh, the, I was going to say the main part of the video is over, the important part, and everybody's yelling at me. There was no important part. Okay, what am I supposed to do? I can't keep, I can't come with something big every week. You know, if, uh, talking about a spider and then and then that related to an ad on Yahoo, Matt. That ain't shit. Okay, it ain't shit. I can't do something big every week. And once you realize you know it's a half page, and you're in a Sims game, and everything's already been broken down. What are you supposed to do? So let's have some cheap laughs at the expense of the reality itself. Check out the nominees. <laughs> Outstanding drama series. Lovecraft Country. <laughs> ain't seen it, ain't gonna see it. The Mayor of Easttown got through a uh, episode and a half before I had to go throw up. I May Destroy You. 
not going to be on my list. So much for those nominees. Outstanding comedy series, the Black La- Black Lady Sketch Show. <laughs> Close to making my list. Very intriguing, but it's not going to make the list. The flight attendant. Is that with that's with that um the, what's the the girl from the Big Bang Theory, the Kaylee Kaoko or his name some strange name. The girl in the Big Bang Theory is the flight attendant here. Kylie or Kaylee Kaoko. Um the nerds loved it because that well, they're one of their their nerd heroes, Leonard, finally got to date her. She, and when it first came out, I mean she was cute and funny and all that and you know leonard got her but that pissed off like i guess it pissed off like a hundred million jocks that the that the nerds won so that that didn't go over very well and this one's called hacks i have no idea what that's about but it's i'm not gonna see it but that's that's an outstanding comedy series for anybody interested this is outstanding performances in this category perry mason okay when i perry mason came on HBO Max or whatever, I don't know, a year ago. And my grandmother used to read all the um uh, she my grandmother born in say 1915, she's been dead for a long time. Used to read all the Perry Mason novels, um Agatha Christie, if that if I'm saying that right, all those novels. So I thought, okay, this is some legendary uh private eye and how bad can they screw this up? It's going to be set in the past. That's always cool. You know, I can even put up with the, um, what did um, John Luke Picard played in the holodeck? He played like Dix or something, going back as a, as a in time as a private eye. If I can put up with those those bad holodeck specials in the Star Trek The Next Generation, I can, I can probably find some enjoyment in Perry Mason. I watched an episode and a half, and it was horrible. I mean, I don't, I never read the Perry Mason. I don't know the old, the, the lineage of it or the canon of it, but I assure you, like everything else, they they probably went to try to destroy it because the guy is just, I don't know. In other words, there's no way, in my opinion, the, the character, what they present on HBO Max is true to the original Perry Mason. Just like the most recent version of A Christmas Carol. I mean, you want to talk about A Christmas Carol, one of the greatest movies and presentations of all time, a George C. Scott Christmas Carol where Scrooge is taken you know, the Christmas past ghost, the ghost of Christmas present, and the ghost of Christmas future, George C. Scott. They remade it, I don't know, four or five years ago with that horrible actor, um, Guy, what's his name? Guy, Guy, oh, I almost said the name of a of a YouTube channel I, I like and watch, but that's not, um, I don't want to, don't want to mix those two. He was the, he was in the time machine, that horrible actor. He was also in one of the greatest movies of all time, the Count of Monte Cristo. He's Scrooge. And they, they twisted the story where Scrooge has to stay over at the boarding school or wherever he's been sent off to school. And they actually inserted two disgusting scenes of debauchery sexual molestation into scrooge they just yeah, just who cares if dickens didn't put it in just put it in scrooge is is apparently molested as a child as he stays over in his boarding school and also there's scenes where Cra- bob cratchit's wife is coming on or offering up favors those kinds of favors to scrooge to get money for tiny tib can you believe what this reality has done in terms of the complete destruction and adulterization of everything so anyway the perry mason it was horrible turned it off if that's an outstanding performance i i don't know i'd like to see how bad the competition is but of course it's all guys there's no real there's no real voting here there's no real competition it's all probably Probably got the award for whatever, the, whoever can get the award here, In Treatment, Perry Mason, or The Undoing. Well, there's probably more up than just the HBO series. They, they probably already have it picked out before they started filming. The Undoing here, um, Pam was with me. She, oh, we're going to check this out. The Undoing, heard a lot about it with, with um, oh, what's his name? He was in Four Weddings and a Funeral and um, Notting Hill, um, whatever, and she, Nicole Kidman. What is his name? Hugh Grant. It's absolutely horrible. I had to turn that off after one uh, episode. Um, documentaries, outstanding documentaries. Tina, <laughs> the Bee Gees, 
and Allen versus Farrow. Okay, I'll talk about the Bee Gees. I had I actually did watch that, and it's it's bad. It is bad. I mentioned a few videos back. I had to. I kept trying to see. Okay, how are they going to present how the Bee Gees that were not a gigantic band, how they were caught up in the disco trend, and how they became worldwide triple platinum mega mega stars because of what happened during disco and i also wanted to see how they would present it in terms of the end of disco and that part that part was interesting but that's all anybody wants to see when it comes to the Bee Gees. you have to sit through like an hour and 20 minutes of this horrible documentary where it shows they were trying to be like the beatles and just songs that you know were really really they did, i don't think they had anything um in my opinion that that was any good um, it's like that very early Pink Floyd stuff that just, you know, is really terrible compared to Dark Side of the Moon. Then like fast forward, fast forward, fast forward, fast forward, an hour and 20, 30 minutes in, they did do a pretty good job for a 15 minute period showing how massive the disco kick was, how they were caught in up into it as mega stars. And as quickly as it came, I was right there during this time period in history, although I was young, very, very young, I saw... Uh, my oh, uh, you know um older um relatives going out to discotheques and i remember relatives getting together when i was down in ocean city they were going going out to see saturday night fever and we were all of course you know too way too young and I remember it was like a big deal like oh you know these they're going to go see saturday night fever and this cousin can go see it but the we can't see it because we're you know sitting at the kids table and that was like a big deal oh they're going to go see saturday night fever and I remember, it is true, as quickly as it came in, the whole Disco Sucks thing came, which, according to the documentary and history, was perpetuated by a famous Chicago DJ, a, a radio station called The Loop, where it performed a, a, a gigantic um, Burn Your Disco Records event at the end of a Chicago, was it a Chicago White Sox game? I, I don't know. I don't think it was a Cubs game. Maybe it was a White Sox. I think it was Chicago and not Detroit, but it doesn't matter. A famous DJ said, if you bring your disco record to the park, you get in for 90 cents, and then we'll destroy all these disco records. So, guys, you know what I'm going to say. The whole reality and cultural trends are laid down by the reality and cultural and societal puppet masters. Who knows how far in advance? You know, it could be, it could be the whole reality from day one could be a script here of some kind. But there was no this DJ, you know, is he didn't end, you know, the disc. He brought the disco sucks, and everybody then camped on to disco sucks. It was all meant to be as quick as it came in, as quick as it went out, and it was cool. I remember it was cool then to say, "Oh man, that you still have that Saturday Night Fever album, man? That's embarrassing. Disco sucks." It was cool to pile on to disco, and all part of the of the general reality script it's incredible how they how they do it obviously beyond what uh what Niedermeyer and the secret societies can do there's things going on here we just don't understand Allen versus Farrow yeah that's not going to be on my list um <clears throat> purported documentary on sexual abuse more sexual abuse <laughs> from Woody Woody Allen um Dylan Dylan Farrow, the daughter of Mia Farrow, reports sexual abuse against Woody Allen, who I guess there was all sorts of um, allegations when he left M Mia Farrow. He left Mia Farrow for her daughter, Sun Yi, and went off to marry her. That must have been a real shock to the family. So that's strange enough. See, this is how the reality does business, guys. Somebody saying, well, wait a sec. What do you mean? It's going to be fake. Oh, no, Woody, Woody Allen probably is a real movie director and producer. And but I'm just saying, what a coincidence that the 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 strangest little creepy little weirdo in the world that you'll ever meet. And it, for those, um, here we go. I'm going to say 35 again because that this number is a very appropriate. Uh, people under 35 don't really know who Woody Allen is. They haven't seen. I mean, if you're under 40 or under 45, you haven't seen Sleeper and some of the old stuff. But if you know Woody Allen, I mean, he's just, even in his movies, his creepiest little, strange little dude, the, the ugliest, creepiest little dude is involved in these sexual assault allegations of, not that it matters. Is it ever good? What does it matter what he looks like? I hear you. I hear you. But I'm just saying, what a coincidence 
you know, that uh, just how the reality does business without pulling shit off, without anybody knowingly in on it. I'm going to, I'm sticking to that. That's the basis of how I've observed the reality. But um, this, needless to say, this will not be on my list <laughs> of, of documentaries that I'm going to put forth. And for some, I'm, are there any documentary guys that are, that are real? Are there any documentaries? Like they'll present Lincoln, <clears throat> the movie Lincoln, like it's real. I remember sitting in the movie Lincoln and it was just horrible with, um, is it Daniel Day Lewis not liking it. And since when I'm showing the screen is so exciting, I better put some new thumbnails up, <clears throat> not liking it all. And kind of like feeling bad. That <clears throat> it was my obligation to watch Lincoln, even though this movie stinks and I'd, I just wanted to run out of the theater. I felt like I had to watch it to learn about history. And then when I started to understand how the world really works, I don't, I have to look at the date, um, you know, on, on Lincoln guys to see when that movie came out to see what I did or did not understand about reality that came through the, the 2001 seven 11 job application. I might've been waking up to that, but I, even if I was waking up to that, I again, have to look at the date of Lincoln. I still would have, you know, when, when a movie says this is based on historical fact and the, the facts that history has laid down about what is 1776, what is the Civil War, what is Abe Lincoln, who, who is Abe Lincoln? Of course, I, I didn't question that until, until years later. So I thought it was my duty to watch this horrible movie. And then years later, I thought, well, why would I... Why would I believe it's real? I mean, for what? what? Just because people said it was such a great presentation that Daniel Day-Lewis did Lincoln so well and his performance was deserving of an Oscar. Well, how does he know? How does anybody know what Lincoln was like other than the other, quote, caricature type presentations of Lincoln in, in President's Day car commercials? So anyway, it's just it's just funny to go through this stuff and to remember how we used to think about things before we're, quote, in the know. And that doesn't apply. We know much now. We just think we know enough now to, to know we'll never know much about anything. The thing that the, the only, the, the real problem is when I was a child of the Matrix or people that have double PhDs from certain um, universities, they think they know everything. They think they're just experts at everything. And, um, you know, when you start going down the truth path, um, you start learning what reality is not, but most the most important lesson you learn is you basically know nothing. And, uh, you know, like I said, well, the way shit is pulled off here, we will, we will never know as long as we're in the, in the avatar body. I'd like to, I'd be, it's going to be real interesting to learn all this stuff on the day of our death, which will probably be the day of our life. Thanks for listening, guys.